Hello once again. I really appreciate everybody's patience while I took a little break from making videos and dealt with some personal crap that was going on. But I'm back and I've got something really cool to show you guys today. This is a little something I bought myself for Christmas. It is a Western Electric Trimline phone. It's a rotary phone and it was made in 1981, quite late for a rotary phone. And funny enough, the same age as that Northern Telecom 500 phone that I made a video of and repaired for a viewer. I got this on eBay. I paid about $65 for it after shipping, which is about a fair price for one in good condition. And this thing's in excellent condition and it works perfectly. When I got it, it did have an issue with the ringer. The ringer would only make a dull thudding noise when it rang. Uh, but I took the phone apart, took the ringer apart, and it turned out the little hammer that strikes the bell uh, had slipped out of its return spring. So I just put it back in the return spring and that was it. And it's fixed and this thing works awesome. And it's such a beautiful phone in this uh, burnt orange color. They called it burnt orange, although I've also seen it called rust. I guess they used both names at different times. But uh, this is a pretty neat phone. Western Electric introduced the trim line in 1965 and it was a completely radical design because it was an entirely new concept which uh, the Bell system called the dial to user concept because the dial is in the handset itself. And so you have the dial right in the palm of your hand. So for the first time you could use a telephone with one hand that hadn't been possible before and uh, you could walk around and if you needed to make another call or, or dial something for an automated system or whatever you didn't have to walk back to the base of the phone to do so and that was really quite a uh, a novel concept for the time and the trim line was a very successful phone they made a ton of these as a matter of fact, uh, the trim line is still being made today. Uh, the rotary dial version was made until the mid-80s, I think, when the bell system broke up. But the touchtone version has been made continuously since the late 60s. Uh, AT&T manufactured it until the mid or late 90s, I think. And then Lucent took over manufacturing after that. And now, today, a company called Advanced American Telephones makes the trim line. And it only differs very little from this original design that they debuted in 1965. It's really, really cool, I think. But these old rotary trim, trim lines, what cool phones they are. And they came in so many different colors. And uh, it's funny. Uh, kind of a vibrant color like this burnt orange is traditionally not something that I ever would have been interested in. In the past I, I always liked you know white or black or beige or brown or the boring colors like that but for some reason I saw a video of a burnt orange trim line just like this one on YouTube and I thought geez that looks really really cool and so that's what I decided to get and I indeed think this is one radical color. I really enjoy it. And the other colors are really nice too. Um, burnt orange is one of the more rare colors, by the way. They're around. You can get them on eBay, but they command just a slightly higher price than the other colors that were available. Uh, aqua blue is another color. I uh, One place I read, aqua blue is the most desired color. They command the highest prices. And of course, they also made an avocado green, which I really love. I think the avocado green looks great. And yeah, this phone you can see is in beautiful shape. I did Novus it. Brought it back to a really nice shine. The original cord is in good shape. And these came with three sizes of cord. Uh, this one came with the medium size cord. I believe the small size was what you usually got. But you could also get a medium size cord, which is what this has, and the really long cord that you could get as well. And if you have one of these and you need a replacement cord, uh, you can actually buy original 
uh, AT&T replacement cords on eBay uh, that are matching in color. So if something ever happened and I needed to get a new cord, I don't have to get a dumb white or black cord. Uh, somebody actually sells a burnt orange uh, curly cord on eBay, which is pretty great. Being a late model example of the original trim line, it does have RJ11 jacks for both the handset and the line cord, which is a godsend. Ask me how I know. And as a matter of fact, the trim line was the first Bell System phone uh, to use modular jacks. Uh, the earliest trim lines did have a hardwired line cord, but the handset cord uh, did use modular jacks right from the start, but not the RJ11 jacks that we're familiar with. They used uh, what today is known as a, a maxi jack or a maxi plug. It was, a, it was like a modular jack, but just a lot bigger. And those early trim lines used those jacks to connect the handset to the base. And the cord was a bit thicker as a result too. But this later one just has the normal RJ11 jacks. Luckily, another really cool thing about the trim line phone, I don't know if you saw this when I lifted up the handset before. The dial lights up. Let me turn the light out behind me here. Look at that. The dial lights up. It's got a green LED in there to light up the dial. And this light is powered right from the loop current of the telephone line. The earliest trim line phones, the dial light was actually uh, incandescent. Um, and of course, a uh, telephone line can't provide enough loop current to light up an incandescent bulb. So the earliest trim lines actually came with a transformer that you had to plug into the wall. And the power for the incandescent light and the telephone line ultimately came through the same cord, which was why the cord was hardwired. It was a special cord. So you had a transformer and then a special, uh, a special plug that took the electric power and the telephone line and split it down the right wires to the telephone. And that's how that worked. And then in, I think, the late 70s, they changed it out for a green LED. And this had to have been the first use of a green LED, or certainly a very early use of a green LED. And the way you can tell whether a trim line is incandescent or LED by um, uh, without actually picking it up and looking at it, is if you rotate the dial here, right between the zero and the one, it says LED. And that's how you know, and it's hidden behind the finger stop here. Notice that when I rotate the dial, the finger stop actually moves a little bit. I, pick, I rotate a little bit and it moves to a point and then it stops. And this is because the dial being smaller than a dial you'd find on a Model 500 phone, has to rotate more than 360 degrees if you want to dial a zero. It has to go just a little more than 360 degrees in order to have enough travel, because it's a smaller dial. So that's kind of neat, having that uh, moving finger stop. You might have also noticed me pressing this little button down here. This was another innovation that started with the Trimline phone. The, we would today call it a flash button. At the time it was called the recall button. It's just a secondary hook switch. You got the normal hook switch right there. But you had a second one right on the handset. You can see the dial light goes out when I press it because it goes back on hook. And this was, uh, this was a secondary aid to the whole dial to user concept because if you wanted to make another call, you didn't have to go back to the base, hang the phone up and then pick it back up. You could just hold the recall button for a second or two, let go and you were ready to make another call. And of course it also works as a flash button. Hold it for half a second or, or so and you get a flash so you can answer a call waiting call or anything like that. So this was an entirely new concept 
And again, it was really radical and uh, aided in the whole dial to user thing, which became pretty much a universal standard in telephones eventually. You can see there in the middle of the dial, it says Western Electric. I think that's a really neat look. So unlike the Model 500 phones, which had a clear spot uh, uh, in the middle of the dial to put like the uh, label that shows your phone number or whatever, uh, it's kind of small. So in the Trimline phone, they just put a solid matching color plate with the Western Electric name on it. I think that looks pretty cool. And then up here, there's another plate that says Trimline with the Bell System logo, and I think that looks really cool. And you can remove this plate, and on the incandescent lit versions, under this plate uh, is where you could change the incandescent bulb if it burned out. On the LED ones, that's not needed, but if you want to, you can remove this plate and take a look at the, the uh, LED inside there, which is kind of funny. And looking at the base here, that is a, the plate where you could stick a phone number card, and I've made my own here. I made it in uh, GIMP and printed it out. The uh, text area code there is an Arial font, and then the number itself is Courier font. And if I wanted to go even more realistic, I could have typed the number on a typewriter. That would have given it even a more authentic look. But I think that looks pretty uh, authentic, pretty um, historically accurate with the fonts and everything. I just didn't cut it very straight, but that's okay. It serves the purpose. So you can't mount this phone on a wall. If you try to, the handset would just fall out. It's not designed for that. But they did make uh, wall-mounted versions of the trim line that had a more angular shaped base so that the handset could hang on the base without falling off. And there were other companies who made a copy of this, just like the Model 500 phone. Other companies did make copies of the Trimline phone. Uh, ITT, Stromberg, Car Stromberg Carlson, and GTE were three of them that made copies of this phone. Interestingly, Northern Telecom never made a copy of this phone. Although they did make another phone uh, based on the same concept, uh, Northern Telecom called it the Contempra. And it was basically the same design concept as the trim line. It was just cosmetically different. Namely, the base was a bit wider, but it was all the same concept. The dial was on the handset itself and uh, all that stuff. So Northern Telecom never made a trim line, but they did make the Contempra, which is interesting. Another sort of radical design uh, choice on this phone, well not really design choice, but uh, engineering choice, is if you open up the handset, all the electronics, uh, what phone people in the business call the network electronics, if you open up the handset, all the uh, network electronics are inside the handset, and they're on a flexible PCB, uh, not a standard PCB, it's a flexible circuit board. So it's, it's kind of this thin plastic sheet that has metal traces painted onto it and the components soldered onto the sheet. And it's this thin flexible plastic sheet so that it can curve to the shape of the handset. That was really radical at the time and it worked really well. Another sort of innovation uh, with the trim line phone was the bell. The bell's located in the base of the unit and it's a different type of bell than what's used in the Model 500 sets. Uh, it's a single bell, uh, not a dual bell, so uh, it's just a one bell, so it makes a single pitch. And the hammer is actually inside the bell. It hits it on the inside wall, which is kind of interesting. Uh, that type of bell wasn't introduced with the trim line. It was actually introduced with the Princess phone in 1959. So, speaking of ringing, let's hear this thing ring. I've got this thing hooked up to my VoIP line. 207-952-8919. I make this number public. If you call this number, you can send me a fax or leave a message on an answering machine that I have set up. I'm going to make a video about that line at some point. But let's hear this thing ring.
and then the call is in progress. So there you go. Now, the bell might not have sounded very resonant there, and it's not. Uh, that's because I've done a quite minor kind of redneck modification to it to make it a little bit quieter. The ringer in this thing is loud. It does have a volume lever on the bottom. Here's the bottom of the phone. This is where the line cord plugs in. It does have a volume lever on it, but even on the quietest setting, it's uh, really loud, like startlingly so to me, but I'm easily startled. As you might know if you watched my recent live stream in which this phone rang a few times. So there's actually a little modification that I did to this thing to make the bell a little quieter. And I'll show you that when we look inside the phone. But before we do that, let me just uh, show you what the call quality is like. Hello, this is a call to the Western Electric Trimline phone from 1981, and uh, hopefully it sounds good. I've made a couple of calls with this phone already, including one intercontinental call, or transcontinental call, and uh, in all the cases, I was told that this thing sounds excellent, and it certainly sounds great on the receiving end, too. Uh, the mouthpiece is an old-school carbon microphone that pretty much all telephones used until the electronicized telephones of the 90s came around. But yeah, this phone works awesome. It's got a lot of life left in it, and uh, it's a real pleasure to use, that's for sure. So here's what the inside of the unit looks like. Getting into it's real easy. You remove the uh, number plate, and underneath are two flathead screws, just loosen those, they're captive, or at least I think they're captive. And the plastic base just lifts right off, really easy. So there's the wiring, of course, classic uh, bell system, old school telephone, everything's wired together with spade connectors on flathead screws. There's your hook switch right there, and the uh, beefy spring. Under there is the bell, you can see there. And the little modification I did is this white chamber right here, which at first I thought was the network electronics um, before I learned they were in the handset because a Model 500 phone has a white or beige plastic block that's filled with epoxy and that's what has the network electronics inside it. But on a trimline phone, this little white plastic box is empty. It's a resonation chamber. It serves, it has a little port facing the bell, on the side facing the bell, and it serves to amplify the sound of the bell by serving as a resonation chamber. So you can take this plastic box off with that screw right there, and I just took it off and I stuffed it with tissues. <laughs> That's what I did. I just stuffed it with tissues and that uh, disabled its amplification and resonation properties and I stuck it back in and that was my solution for uh, taming down the uh, ringer volume on this phone. And it worked. So uh, there you go. That's how you can sort of tone down the, uh, the volume of a trim line ringer. Actually, here's a pre-recorded video I made of what the uh, bell looks like uh, outside of the phone. And you can actually see, this was, right, this was me testing the bell right after I fixed the hammer mechanism. So you can see the little plastic hammer inside the bell hammering away when it rings.
I almost forgot to do a dialing demonstration. We'll dial the uh, Environment Canada number to get the weather. Really nice work and dial on this phone. Very smooth. There you go. Let's take a look at the bottom of the phone. And first you'll see Western Electric right there. Very cool. This bottom is made of metal. There's the line jack, of course. The earliest trim line phones did not say Western Electric on the bottom, or they might have, but the biggest feature on the bottom was a great big stylized trim line logo. But the later ones like this one didn't have that. There's the date code sticker. You can see it says R81-12. I don't know what the 12 means, but the 81 means 1981. And I didn't know that at first because when I bought this phone, I had no idea how late of a model it was. As a matter of fact, until I opened it on Christmas Day, I didn't know it was the LED version because I didn't know that the little LED symbol was hiding behind the finger stop. And then when I started playing with the rotary dial, I saw the LED and I was like, oh! <laughs> so that's that story. Um, also on the bottom, of course, you have the volume control, but then it also says the Trimline phone. Bell system property, not for sale. Oops. Yeah, this phone was made at a time when you didn't own your own telephone. The Bell system owned your telephone. And when uh, you signed up for a telephone line, you got a Model 500 phone, or later a 1500 or 2500. And if you wanted a, sort of a special phone, like a trim line, or a princess phone, or one of the design line phones, uh, you had to rent them <laughs> from, the, from, the com from the telephone company, which is kind of funny. And yeah, um, at the time this phone was made, um, that was still the case. And if for some reason you moved uh, and you had to, you, or you had to otherwise, you know, give up your telephone line for whatever reason, uh, a serviceman from the Bell system would come to take your phone away because it belonged to them. And when your phone got taken away, it got refurbished and then rented out to another subscriber. So being how late this phone is, it's actually a possibility that this phone was originally manufactured way, way before 1981 and they simply refurbished it uh, later. And actually often when the Bell system refurbished phones, uh, the phones would, the remanufactured phones would be a different color than what they originally were. They would repaint the housing if the phone was not in a condition that would pass for new or at least mint condition. So it's actually a possibility that this phone actually started life in the 60s or 70s, um, and possibly even as a different color, and then later it, in life it got converted to LED and got painted a different color. Or this phone might have been made new in 1981. Who knows? Uh, I don't know if there's actually a way to tell that or not. I'm sure there are, but I don't know what they are. But yeah, that was a time when uh, you didn't own your own telephone. When the Bell system broke up, that's when you could finally own your own telephone. 
and uh, that's why this phone is here with me today instead of in a landfill or recycled into something else was this phone survived the uh, bell system breakup and whoever owned the phone at the time the bell system broke up suddenly they became the owner of this phone and then it got passed down or stuffed in a closet or whatever until it eventually ended up on eBay. Kind of neat how that sort of history works, but there you go. And with that, I think that's all there is to show of the 1981 Western Electric Trimline phone. I'm really happy to have this. Um, I think it's very, very neat. It's a very nice phone. It's really fun to use. I've come to really love uh, rotary dialing. And uh, it's, just, it's just really cool and I love the color of it. And it works very nicely, and, and it's just really a joy to use. That's all there is to it. I keep this thing hooked up to my uh, my VoIP line. I don't answer calls with it because I don't answer calls on my VoIP line. But I do dial out uh, on my VoIP line. And uh, this is really fun to use. I really enjoy it. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the videos to come.